New clues lead police to a person of interest in today's mass shooting on a Brooklyn subway. We speak to New Yorkers on this latest, on this latest act of terror. USC is suing YouTubers over disruptive pranks on campus. Students are, describe their fear that they experienced. Passport applications now have a gender X option. Find out why some members of the LGBTQ community are skeptical. Annenberg TV News is next. Terror hit a New York City subway this morning when a gunman released smoke bombs and then opened fire. NYPD is looking for answers tonight following the shooting that left at least 29 people injured. Good evening, I'm Tatum Larson. And I'm Jacob Wheeler. New York police released photos of the person of interest just a short time ago. The incident forced subway riders to flee the station in Brooklyn. Investigators found a Glock handgun, three extended magazines, two smoke grenades, and a hatchet. New York City Mayor Eric Adams said the search has been made more difficult because of at least one broken security camera. We heard from two Brooklyn residents about the attack. There was blood on the floor. There was a lot of blood trailing on the floor. At the time, in the moment, I did not think that it was a shooting because it sounded like fireworks. Um, what would have happened if I would have, you know, been in that subway? What would have happened if I was one of those people that got hurt? You know, what would I do if I was in that situation? So we have at least, if I'm correct, eight million people living in New York City. And I'm, I could say at least majority of them take the subway every day for transportation. And if we don't have, we don't feel safe, you know, a lot of people are not going to take it. In response to the shooting, Uber announced a temporary hold on surge pricing in Brooklyn. An Uber spokesperson said, quote, Our hearts go out to the victims of this morning's terrible shooting in Sunset Park. Following the incident, Uber disabled surge pricing in the vicinity and capped pricing citywide. LAPD Chief Michelle Moore said there is no indication of any threat here in Los Angeles, but riders at bus and rail stations will see more uniformed police officers and K-9 units. He says after a high-profile crime like the New York City subway attack, there is a danger of a copycat shooter. Two men on campus caused students to panic after filming a prank video. USC is now suing those YouTubers. Reporter Haja Ba spoke to a student who was in the classroom last month when this happened. Two YouTubers are the target of a lawsuit by USC after allegedly disrupting classes as pranksters. LA County court documents say the men were pretending to be Russian mobsters. Avery Coulter was inside a classroom in Taper Hall last month when two YouTube pranksters came into the lecture on the Holocaust. She said she was terrified when one of the men started yelling at her class. Black, like a tight black shirt, tight black pants, and a silver briefcase, like was just holding it like steady. And then um, after he said, your dad owes me millions, he started reaching for the briefcase, like with his other hand to like undo it, I think, or I'm not sure. And then that's when like, I was near the door and I started like running out and girl, um, crying, um, clearly very upset. A lot of them had left all their belongings inside. Um, and overall, it was kind of hard to even read the situation just because people were yelling gun and running away from the building. The YouTubers are identified as Ernest Eric Kamensky and Hugo Bai. They're accused of filming other pranks on campus. A psychology major student expressed her concern. I find the act very disgusting. The thing that I could think of is like, where's DPS in all of this? I mean, we see them on their bikes going around campus. There's a nun at like the entrances to just keep an eye on like who's coming in and who's coming out. Annenberg Media reached out to DPS for comment. We were told LAPD is handling the case. For Annenberg Media, I'm Haja Ba. A guaranteed income for high school seniors who experience homelessness is in the works. The bill passed the California Senate Education Committee. Next stop, the Human Services Committee. The goal is to provide a few months of financial help for students as they transition to college or work. The legislation doesn't specify how much money students would get, but the bill's author has been talking about $1,000 a month. The two presidents of Trojan Shelter support the bill. It's a great start. I think it's, it's great that uh, they're paying more attention to this issue. Um, 
it's an issue that's not talked about enough. Anything to bring more awareness to the issue of students experiencing homelessness is a win, I would say. To qualify, high school seniors would need to complete the free application for the Federal Student Aid or the California DREAM Act. If approved, students would receive at least four monthly payments between April and August of next year. Now the latest on the race for a new mayor of L.A. The campaign is shaping up to be a close one. The race for mayor of Los Angeles may be determined by the Latino vote. Political reporter Juliet Smith takes us to a Latino rally for a longtime member of Congress, Karen Bass. Latinos make up nearly half of the city of Los Angeles, and they could play a major role in deciding the next mayor of L.A. We need a mayor who's going to fight for the guy who clocks in and out of work every day like I do. Representative Karen Bass spoke today at Mariachi Plaza in Boyle Heights, a predominantly Latino community. Bass says she is no stranger to the Latino community. I have lived my life bringing all different communities together. So reaching out to Latinos is in my DNA. It's how I've lived my life, and of course it's how I want to run my campaign. Antonio Villaragosa served as the first Latino mayor of L.A. County from 2005 to 2013. Villaragosa calls her a longtime ally of the Latino community. I've watched her. I've seen her fight for people, even when the fight was lonely. I believe in Karen Bass. But today, a group of unhoused Latinos says she has not done enough to combat homelessness in L.A. Still, supporters say getting Bass elected is a priority in the Latino community. The Latino vote is critical for that next leader for Los Angeles. But more than that, Karen Bass is one of us. She is part of the community and has been. Latino vote is what is going to get her there. The offices of candidates Kevin DeLeon and Rick Caruso have not responded to a request for a comment. The mayoral primary takes place on June 7th. The two leading candidates will face off in the November 8th general election. For Annenberg Media, I'm Juliette Smith. Some of the candidates for mayor of L.A. are not getting much attention. They're calling that voter suppression. Reporter Lupe Guerenas has the report from the California rally at California State L.A. L.A. mayoral candidates Craig Gree, Alex Grunenfelder, Gina Viola, and Mel Wilson express their concerns about voter suppression. This is not the first debate from which qualified candidates have been excluded. And unless the public demands otherwise, it will not be the last. Five of the 12 is less than half the people running, and this is voter suppression. 24-year-old Alex Grunenfelder is the youngest candidate for mayor. He says change needs to happen. We know that that change is not possible if the voters of this city are not aware of everyone who is running for mayor of Los Angeles. Candidate Mel Wilson wants voters to wake up. Pay attention and, and realize that the system at its core is not fair. And they need to stand up for what's right because it's their future. Cal State LA students also voiced their opinions and shared the importance of having these candidates here on campus. It's the younger generation that's going to make an impact. And I'm really happy to see these candidates here spreading their mission, spreading their goals, and spreading their what they want to do for LA. Another student wants every candidate to have a fair chance. I think it's important that their message gets out, and I don't think that they're being represented fairly in terms of the proper discourse surrounding all of the race for LA. So Viola has a loud and clear message for voters. Vote, organize, and be out in the streets. Be everywhere. The next mayoral debate will take place on Sunday, May 1st at Cal State LA. For Annenberg Media, I'm Lupe Guerenas. Rising COVID cases in China has pushed residents in Shanghai into a strict lockdown. Annenberg reporter Draco Guan joins us to explain how it's affecting students here at USC. It's been over a month, Shanghai remains on lockdown, with more than 25,000 new infections reported today. China continues to enforce a tough zero-COVID policy with mass testing, quarantines, and lockdowns. But it's taking a toll on residents and their livelihood. 
Look at this. Viral videos posted to Chinese social media Weibo show residents confronting health workers over the food shortage. And a corgi dog was beaten to death by a security guard while the owner was taken to quarantine facility. International student here, who called Shanghai home, shared their reactions. Every people are tested every day. I think it's what the uh, government have to do. My grandfather had to endure the pain for like a whole week. He like waited for a whole week to get the medicine. So um, things are quite tough right now. Like I was frequently in shock in the past two weeks. For elderly, I know most of them they are not so quick with technology, and they don't have enough like um, systems to help them get enough food. Um, that's like a really unfortunate situation right now. About 25 million people live in Shanghai. Now the city is allowing about over 6 million residents to go outdoors, but some must stay in their own neighborhood. Coming up, USC students can now focus on physical and mental health with a new minor. A UCLA study reveals that teen overdose deaths have more than doubled since 2010. The trailer for Stranger Things Season 4 is out and fans are showing their excitement on social media. Worried your friend struggling but don't know how to reach out? You could say how while you will get a fake tattoo. You could ask with an app if it works for you. You could write him a text or knit him a sweater. If you can't be together, you could write him a letter. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Chat on the game, kick off your flip flops. You can ask on your couch while you binge watch. However, you do it, you gotta ask a friend. And if they don't share, you can ask again. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. There are a lot of ways to reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. When not in your hand trying to text somebody back, because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> There's a new box to check on U.S. passports. In addition to the M and F options, U.S. citizens can now select the, ge the gender X when submitting their application. The X marker is officially defined as, quote, unspecified or another gender identity. If chosen, this marker will appear on passports regardless of previous passports or documents. The requirement for medical documentation has also been dropped. The director of USC's Center for LGBTQ Plus Health Equity says that this change is complicated for the community. I think it's a measured victory. If you turn up at an airport and your passport says X and the person who is looking at your passport was not trained and does not know what that means, how are they going to react to that? Are they going to automatically put people with an X on their passport into extra scrutiny and security because they themselves don't understand what that means? If the Biden administration really wanted to make sure that um, passports didn't exclude trans people from freedom of movement, the best option would be to eliminate gender on passports altogether. Changing the, the gender marker on your passport is as easy as checking yes on an application. No additional documents are needed and it does not have to match your ID or citizenship documents. Your new passport will have an X for gender, for gender to reflect this change. A new study reveals that teen overdose deaths have more than doubled since 2010, even as teen drug use has hit a new low. According to the study, the reason for this rise is an increase in the use of fentanyl. Fentanyl was found to be involved in nearly 80% of teen overdose deaths last year. 
UCLA researcher Joseph Friedman talked about the dangers of fentanyl in drugs available today. Drug use rates are at all-time lows. And so what this is telling us is that teen drug use is actually becoming more dangerous, not more common. From other segments of the population, that once overdose death rates start rising for a certain group, they tend to continue to do so for many years. Friedman says contaminated pills and powders create the highest risk for an overdose. He says that parents should have in-depth conversations with their teens about the dangers of drug use. Feeling stressed out? A new minor from the Department of Physical Education might be the fit for you. The minor aims to promote wellness by examining the relationship between physical and mental health. The curriculum will incorporate both experiential and traditional learning. Students will explore the foundations of yoga, stress management, and mindfulness to develop a more healthy lifestyle. Plus, the head of the minor says it will help students prepare for high-stress careers. The minor is an exploration of the body and mind in a comprehensive interdisciplinary program designed to really enhance student understanding of how the mind and body operate together and the relationship between them. Everyone is welcome. I think everyone can benefit from having a little more, um, a little more tools in their life, in their tool belt to learn how do I deal with stress? How do I deal with anxiety? W you know, what are, are some ways that I can cope with what it means to be human? The new minor comes amid a growing demand for mental health resources. There is no deadline to register, and those who enroll by next semester will receive a free yoga mat. And it seems like California is getting a break from that extreme heat. Our weather anchor Eric Choi gives us our seven-day forecast. Thanks, Jacobs. As you could see in that live camera, conditions sure were breezy and chilly today. If you were outside, you might have literally been blown away. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eric Human Choi with your weather forecast. So we're still dealing with some of the cool temperatures because of these strong winds and the winds are pushing out the leftover moisture that's lingering in our atmosphere. It's 63 degrees right now, 32% humidity currently for the downtown Los Angeles area and USC. It's cooler than normal. Let's go to our regional map as well. We had some wind advisories for the Antelope Valley and Orange County earlier today, and we're still looking at some of those breezes and lingering winds for tomorrow, although under advisory levels, it'll be 71 in Anaheim and Pasadena, 68 in Long Beach. Five-day forecast. Temperatures will remain slightly below average and will gradually warm out throughout the week just in time for Easter Sunday. It'll be mostly clear. Saturday will be cloudy but with no chance of meatballs. And that's it for the weather. Have a great week ahead and a happy Easter for Anamig Media. I'm Eric Human Choi. I'll toss it over to sports. Baseball season is underway and the Dodgers are in Minnesota. We'll take a look at how their game is going. USC Baseball is currently playing a game against CSUN. We'll give you an update on how they're doing. And the Clippers are playing their opening game in the play-in tournament tonight. Their potential playoff scenarios coming up next in sports. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if Smoky is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. Next and finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smoky, catch. Oh, my bad, Smoky. Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter, but this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it.
Happy Tuesday and welcome to ATVN Sports. I'm Noah Cameras. And I'm Hayes Flanagan. USC baseball bounced back this afternoon against CSUN after suffering their first sweep of the season versus number five, the Oregon State Beavers. The Trojans looked, took Matador Field at three today and did not hold back. By the end of the third inning, the Trojans were up 11-2 and had six home runs accounted for. Two of those home runs were back-to-back, -back, marking the first time this has happened for the Trojans since 1999. The Trojans currently lead 15-5 in the ninth. They'll head to the desert this weekend for a three-game series against Arizona State. The NBA play-in tournament is underway. The Brooklyn Nets are currently leading the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Minnesota Timberwolves will be hosting the Los Angeles Clippers. Tip-off is in less than an hour. If the Clippers beat the Timberwolves tonight, they will secure the seventh seed in the playoffs and face the Memphis Grizzlies in the first round. But if they lose, the Clippers will face the winner of the Pelican Spurs play-in game. They'll need to win that game to lock up the eighth and final spot in the playoffs. They would then face the Phoenix Suns in the first round. So Hayes, where do you have the Clippers ending up in this playoffs right now? I see the Clippers locking up the seventh seed tonight and getting that win. Yeah, you know, I have them, I think, losing tonight. And then on Thursday, I think they'll get a win, beat the Pelicans, who I think will beat the Spurs, and then kind of find their way through the playoffs. Yeah. The men's tennis team is coming off a big weekend after defeating crosstown rival UCLA for the fifth time in a row. The Trojans managed to capture the 4-2 win in Westwood. The 21-time national champions currently sit at number 15 in the country with junior Stefan Destanik leading the Trojans as the number two singles player in the country. But it doesn't stop there. Destanik and senior Bradley Fry are doubles dynamic duo earning the number six spot in the country. You can head over to David Mark Stadium at 5 to watch the team take on San Diego tomorrow. The women's lacrosse team is now ranked number 17 in the country. The team ranking fell four spots after a six-goal loss to Stanford on Sunday. The women of Troy fought hard in a high-scoring game against the Cardinals. Even though the Trojans lost, lost sophomore Madison Waters had a career high of five goals. The Trojans currently sit at number two in the Pac-12 with a 5-2 and two conference record. The women travel to Colorado on Friday for another Pac-12 matchup versus the Buffs. The Dodgers have opened a quick two-game series in Minnesota against the Twins. First pitch was about an hour ago, and currently the score is still 0-0. Freddie Freeman and Gavin Lux each have doubles for the Dodgers, and Carlos Correa has two for the Twins. On the mound for the Dodgers is Andrew Heaney, who's making his Dodger debut. So, Hayes, obviously baseball season just began, but I kind of, you know, who's your early pick, you would say, to, you know, maybe come out when the World Series at least get there? Yeah, I'm really excited for the Mets. You know, they just got Scherzer, mm -hmm. and I'm excited to see what they can do with that. But also, I'm from Chicago, so I got to go with my White Sox. Yeah, the Mets could definitely have something going if Jacob deGrom comes back sooner rather than later. And this might be the obvious choice, but I have the Dodgers right now. I just think that lineup, one to nine, by far one of the most dominant, out for sure, I've ever seen. They have the pitching, and, you know, if they can uh, just maybe... And maybe fix some of that pitching, and especially in the bullpen. I think they have a real shot at winning the World Series this year, but obviously early in the year, we'll yeah. have to you know stay tuned and see. <laughs> Hollywood remembers iconic comedian and Aladdin voice actor Gilbert Gottfried. And Netflix's Stranger Things released the official trailer for season four, and fans' worlds have been turned upside down. Lávate las manos por 20 segundos como Elmo. Hay algo especial acerca de este lugar. Se siente como un hogar, una sala debajo del cielo y los árboles. Rodeado de aire fresco y la naturaleza. Todo aquí para que lo disfrutemos y para que lo cuidemos. Tenemos la responsabilidad de cuidar de esta tierra 
que llamamos casa, de preservarla para las generaciones que vienen. Cada acción pequeña contribuye para un cambio mayor. Y cada uno de nosotros podemos hacer la diferencia. Hay algo especial acerca de este bosque. Es un lugar donde se hacen recuerdos. Y juntos podemos preservarla y protegerla. Hollywood is mourning and paying tribute to comedian Gilbert Gottfried. His family said he died today at the age of 67 following a long illness. His publicist said his death was due to complications from muscular dystrophy. Gottfried worked in Hollywood for over 50 years and was known as the comedian's comedian. His iconic voice delivered his brash sense of humor and helped him land the role of Iago the parrot in the animated film Aladdin. His other credits include Beverly Hills Cop 2 and Problem Child. Fellow comedians and friends honored him on social media. Jon Stewart wrote that working with Gottfried was one of the great thrills of his early stand-up life. Gottfried is survived by his wife and two young children. His family described him as a loving husband and father. Time now for a Trending Tuesday, where we cover the latest hot topics and news stories getting attention on social platforms. Netflix just released the first trailer for the long-awaited fourth season of its hit Stranger Things. The immensely popular science fiction horror series debuted on the streaming service in 2016. Here are some of the reactions online about the trailer. Now here's one that says, Every Stranger Things fan after watching the trailer, there will be people who binge watch and finish it the day it comes out. This one says, Me watching season one and me watching season four. That's funny. This is Caleb McLaughlin, who plays Lucas Sinclair, and he's, quote, patiently waiting for Stranger Things 4 to drop on May 27th. There's plenty of anticipation, given that the last season aired in the pre-pandemic days of 2019. After this fourth season, Netflix is planning a fifth and final one. For Anna Big Media, I'm Eric Human Joy. Wow, five seasons. I haven't even gotten past the first season. I don't have to go to my dorm room and watch it on Netflix. Yeah, I mean, when I watched season one, those kids were kids, and now they're, Literally. they're adults. Exactly. That's well, so crazy. after these finals, we're going to go home for summer, and you know, we'll have time to watch stuff like that. On that note, thanks for watching Annenberg TV News. From everyone here at Annenberg Media, I'm Jacob Wheeler. And I'm Tatum Larson. For more coverage, watch and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Annenberg Media. Good night.